This feels pretty good. A little non-Aaron Rodgers action to take our minds off the whole quarterback situation. The Jets have been linked to Jamal Williams. Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, we are talking a little Jamal Williams action, the running back out of Detroit, former Green Bay Packer. The Jets are apparently uh, interested in him. This is coming by Tyler Dunn. This is the dude that hops on uh, Cowherd every now and then. He says, free agency nuggets to pass along. There's mutual interest in Jamal Williams returning to Detroit, but source told me today that Buffalo, Cincinnati, and the New York Jets are all very interested in the running back. Williams led the NFL with 17 rushing touchdowns this past year. So his stats... 262 yards, or 262 rush attempts, 1,066 yards, 17 touchdowns. That's good enough for 4.1 yards per carry. He played with the Green Bay Packers from 2017 to 2020. That just so happens to sync up with one Aaron Rodgers and Nathaniel Hackett. So I can see why the Jets would want to have some interest in bringing Jamal Williams in with your, you know, the Jets perspectively going for a Super Bowl run here. You want to try and figure out guys that could come into the system that have knowledge of the system already to help facilitate the learning curve of said system so you can maximize the amount of uh, good football played and you're not learning quite so uh, long, I guess. Uh, but it's interesting. So, like, why, other than that, would the Jets be interested in him? Well, I think Aaron Rodgers, quarterback that we may be poking around with, uh, would be interested in him as well. He had this to say after a Packer Lion game just last year. Him and I still talk, and I have a lot, a lot of love and affection for Jamal. He's such a special, special guy. Adds so much to the locker room, so much energy to game day. Uh, you know, one of those guys, it's, yeah, there's a gaping hole. Uh, in certain areas when you lose a guy like that. It's just you can't just fill it up with one person. He's just his magnanimous personality is and you guys probably miss him here at the podium too. He's got some great one liners. <laughs> Some pretty strong praise from one Aaron Rodgers. It seems like this guy could absolutely be a culture fit that Robert Sala and Joe Douglas do like bringing in. And we do have a little bit of a weird situation at running back with Brees Hall coming back from injury. Are we going to be ready for week one with him or do the Jets want to maybe IR him for like the first four weeks, work him away, uh, work him in a little bit slower? The Jets did decline to tag uh, with a transition or not transition tag, one of the uh, original round tenders, restricted free agent tenders. Uh, for James Robinson, they're going to let him walk. We don't have Ty Johnson under contract. So it's really just Brees Hall coming back from injury, Bam Knight, Michael Carter. So we got to fill our role a little bit with another player. So would Jamal Williams possibly want to play for Nathaniel Hackett again? Because he did leave and go to the Detroit Lions. Here's what he had to say about the whole Aaron Rodgers conversation and Nathaniel Hackett. Mm, I don't know why. I just feel my boy is going to go to the Jets. To the Jets? You feel yeah. like that? And I, you know, I think... Want to see Jordan Love finally get, you know, his time to mm. just shine and show us mm -hmm. what he's worth. You know what I mean? So, whoo, yeah. Let A-Rod go to Jets, you know, mm. have fun, do his thing. You played for Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, you know, that's Vincent, my boy. That's he sack. So it's funny. So you say, yeah, that's my boy. You light up. People watching the NFL might say, oh, that guy was a bomb as a head coach. Mm. He was terrible. But players seem to like him. So he's with the Jets right now. That makes a lot of sense if you're oh, talking yeah. about Rodgers. He's a player's coach, you know, no matter what. I feel like he's a great offensive coordinator. Mm. May, may not have been a, you know, his first time as a head coach, but a great offensive coordinator. So mm -hmm. just put him in his role, let him have fun out there. But he gets the players going. Like, he makes playing for him fun. So mm -hmm. I feel like no matter what, no matter if they was losing the Broncos, I feel like they still enjoyed his presence there. Mm -hmm. So it seems like Jamal Williams may want to come and play for Hacky Sack, as he's so-called. This makes me feel good because everyone was talking about Nathaniel Hackett possibly being a hack as far as offensive coordinator, maybe, or head coaching candidate. He bombed out in Denver. How's he going to be here? Why would we pick up a failed guy? Look, Aaron Rodgers loves the dude. Jamal Williams loves the dude. I'm excited for Nathaniel Hackett. And I would argue with anyone who's, you know, still a little hesitant. How did Aaron Rodgers perform without Nathaniel Hackett? And how did Russell Wilson look away from Seattle? Seattle looked pretty good without uh, Russell Wilson. So maybe it's not Nathaniel Hackett so much. Maybe it was a little Russell Wilson action that uh, maybe made Denver look so bad. But it's interesting nonetheless. So what would a potential contract look like for Jamal uh, Williams. So it looks like the valuation in terms of what over the cap ranked him at on a week to week basis had him anywhere from, I guess, as low as like 
one million dollars up to as high as fourteen million dollars when he winds up having like a really really good game. Uh, so it's somewhere in the you know way down in the middle because uh, you're not having those those peaks all the time. Uh, according to Spot Track, they have his valued contract at four point one million dollars per year or a two year eight point three million dollar contract. Uh, this past year, he had an average of $3 million per year. So having the 17 touchdowns and 1,000 yards might be in line for a little bit of a payday. I'm a little surprised it would be as low as $4.1 million. But, you know, if that's a situation where you could get him for that number and he wants to come here and win a ring, it would be a lot of fun to have him here. I think he could help facilitate learning the offense to a young group of running backs. And I also think that, there's like, as far as like salary cap tied up in running backs, the Jets have Bam, Knight, uh, Michael Carter, and Brees Hall all under contract for about a lump sum of like $4 million. So you're talking a total of $8 million devoted to running backs. Saquon Barkley by himself is $10 million. So that doesn't even include their backups and everything going on. So $8 million for your stable of running backs for guys that are incredibly good character guys, leaders in the locker room, know the offense and really can help facilitate, uh, you know, positive vibes everywhere. I really like this. I really like Jamal Williams. He's fun to watch. He's interesting to, to listen to. It just seems like he would be a good personality to add to the locker room. So if that's all it's going to cost for the New York Jets, I'm 100% on this. I wasn't really, you know, dialed into him possibly being a free agent, but I'm good with it. I would bring him in as a running back, especially if Brees Hall's not going to be ready to go. It might be nice to have another body in the room that Aaron Rodgers trusts if we get Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets. Yeah!